first of all, I don't have any answers, and you know that. Uh, so all I'm going to do is share some thoughts and some specifics about the background of some of these um, artists that we're going to talk about today. But um, everything was picked because um, I have heard over the years, my kid can do this, and this probably is the premier work where I have heard that statement. Our director, Tracy Atkinson, had seen a show of Ellsworth Kelly in New York and had come home and said to Mrs. Bradley, would you please go and see this new show? So Mrs. Bradley did, and she went into the gallery. She saw this painting, and for some reason, this is the one she wanted. Well, you can just imagine what her friends thought. Why would she want to buy this? So over the years, some of the things I've heard are, well, all color comes from three colors, right? And so how nice to reduce this kind of minimal shape and color statement to red, yellow, and blue, because from yet red, yellow, and blue, we get everything. Then when you go to the library and you read about Mr. Kelly as a young man, this should come as no surprise. He was an outdoorsman and he was a bird watcher. His first major influence was John James Audubon. Yes! I love it! I see it now! Those beautiful birds! And many of them are three colors. Think about that. He was drafted to go into the war during World War II, and he requested to be in the camouflage regiment. So this camouflage battalion was mostly made up of, surprise, artists. This helps me a little bit rethink how I approach and judge this. And when it's reduced to this simple triptych, we have to stretch. I'll be honest, we have to stretch. But just think of cardinals, canaries, and bluebirds. OK? OK. I had the privilege of spending a day with her in New Mexico. And it gave me great pleasure because for some reason, this painting talked to me too, big time. It is such a tough, tough work. And when I met um, Agnes, she was in her 90s, and she died recently. She died 2004. And um, it was fun to see her studio. She lived a very monastic life. Um, she was very into Asian thought, religion. Um, lifestyle and I, I went into her studio and the first thing I noticed on the wall where she painted had a stepladder and leading to the floor all these vertical drippings of very beautiful colors soft colors but vertical drippings and I'm going I've never seen an Agnes Martin vertical it's only horizontal and so you know you know me hoof and mouth disease Miss Martin I noticed all your paint is vertical. Do you paint this way? She said, yes, you see, I'm only 4'10". I lie about my height, I say I'm five feet. She's four feet 10, and she gets up on the ladder and she said, the only way I can do it is to do it this way uh, and control it. So the drips go down on the wall and on the floor, but everything is hung horizontally. And one of the things Miss Martin noticed was she said, you talk a lot, don't you, Barbara? <laughs> I said, uh, yeah, I do. And she said, I don't like talk in my studio. I don't allow people to talk in here. She would hate what I'm doing with you right now. She said, I don't like people to talk in my shows or about my work. I want everyone to bring to it what they will bring to it. If they don't want to look at it, that's fine. But don't tell anybody anything. 
So I got this cockamamie idea in the middle of the night. I do my best work in the middle of the night. And I thought, let's ask Agnes to read one of her poems in front of her painting. Um, and this is what she led off with. I can see humility, delicate and white. It is satisfying just by itself. And trust, absolute trust, a gift, a very precious gift. I would rather think of humility than anything else. Humility, the beautiful daughter. She cannot do either right or wrong. She does not do anything. All of her ways are empty, infinitely light and delicate. She treads on an even path, sweet, smiling, uninterrupted, free. That's Agnes Martin. Ooh, I got goosebumps. Ugh.